Welcome to the Indie NYC Show with creator and host Latrice Baker. Host Gina Lou. And host Samira. With special guests Michelle Wright. Pamela Baldwin. Jacinth Hedlum and Yenny Love. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Indie NYC Show. We are your hosts and executive producers, Latrice Baker. So I am an actress, producer, writer, director, and Gina. I'm an actress as well, writer, producer, and filmmaker. I also do some stunts. Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, this show is by indie artists for indie artists. We want to reveal your talents and help all the projects and everything that you're working on get seen. So this is what this show is about. So if that interests you, then stay tuned. We got more for you in this episode. So how was the screening fundraiser for oh, Mr. JV? It was so good. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was exciting because I think we had started promoting the show two or three weeks before uh, we had the advanced screening. Mm -hmm. And it probably sold out in like a weekend, like right after Christmas. I know. Because <laughs> I guess everybody was like, okay, I bought my family gifts. Mm -hmm. Now we can support <laughs> <laughs> this comedy series that's trying to fundraise for post-production. Uh -huh. So it went really well. We had the screening at um, Stewart Cinema and Cafe. Shout Emma Lynn, yes. Cinema. And we had our red carpet there. We sold mm -hmm. out the 70 seat theater. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. It was good vibes. We got some interviews from people leaving afterwards about like their reactions on the show. Everybody seemed to have a good time. Nice. Now we're having a second screening. <laughs> <laughs> so you can uh, see the trailer, or it's actually more like a teaser. Good afternoon, Ms. Brown. Wipe my ass. Hey, yo, Mr. JV, what you doing, man? Shut the fuck up! It feels so good to be JV. But she want to eat this pussy. Real friends and family. Although we fight, we got chemistry. They have hot water in jail? You ain't even a real barber. You don't know that. Now I can finally release some stress. How much I owe you? $20 for the dildo. Oh, but I don't know if it's on there, but I want two spoons to my face. Ah, yes, I love it. And Gina, so codenamed Rebel. Like it's been through such a process yes. and I'm so excited you're still pushing Thank forward you. with it. Thank you. Tell us what's going on. It's definitely been a journey. So we started out with um, episode one, which was, it's entitled Hunters, the series. Changing the name a little bit to Codename Rebel. And it's basically going to be a continuation showing uh, my character's journey into becoming a hunter. Mm. And um, she's basically still, her, her purpose is to find out who killed her parents because she doesn't believe that it was just some random burglary and oh, her parents are dead. No, she thinks something sinister is going on mm. because nothing was stolen and there's some other details with like the break-in that just don't add up. So she goes to her brother for help, who is happens to be a hunter, uh, but he just, he's like, nah, it was a burglary. Can we just, you know, move on? Right. Let, let them go. But he, he had issues with our parents, so I don't think he's really thinking, you know, with all his cognitive abilities and his hunter, mm -hmm. his hunter senses. He's just kind of like, whatever. And so that's why I'm taking it upon myself, Nadira. Mm -hmm. So you're playing the lead actress. Yes, I am. <laughs> to become a hunter and find out what happened, because I my parents meant the world to me, you know. And what kind of genre is this? Like what? 
This is a drama. This is a drama, an action drama mystery. Nice. And yeah. There's there's like a little like all my favorite genres in one. Right, and I think Gina's yeah. bringing like an awesome diversity to the screen because you are what's your F you're mixed with. Um, I'm uh, like three quarters black, a quarter Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> and she's the lead, so I think that's super dope because it brings just more diversity to yeah. the screen, and especially in action, and we don't have, like, a lot of black action. Like, we're getting more now, of course, right. but I feel like this yeah. is so timely and perfect. You're right. Like, I don't see a lot of action, like, the action drama touching upon interracial couples. Like, my parents in the show, um, Mayor Green is black, and then Samantha Cham is Asian. You don't really see that dynamic playing out mm -hmm. in the action or mystery kind of thing. That's usually more lifetime, I guess, right. special or I agree. sitcom, but not really in that genre. So yeah, that was a great point. Hunters was SAG. It was I, I created it under the union, but I decided to go non-union to continue the series non-union right. because it's just it's easier. You know, as indie artists. Yeah, it's expensive to yeah. go the SAG route. It, it's very expensive and lots of rules and restrictions, et cetera. Whereas if you're non-union, you know, the lines are blurred a little bit. So you can do so much more with a lot less. Yeah. yeah. And, like, nothing against SAG, you know? Like, yeah, it works no. for some people. But, like, if you're not at that point where you have that financial backing, right. like... right. You got to work with your community, <laughs> exactly. and which is what we're trying to build here so that everybody right. a part of this show, a part of this community can eventually start to connect and work together yes. and we can build and yeah. do great things together and celebrate each other's work. Yeah, so so I definitely wanted to point that out because the, the actors in episode one did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. and there were lots of SAG actors in that that I, I wish well, and hopefully maybe down the road we can work together again. Who knows? So wait, do you have episode one? I know you released it when it was Hunters. Is that still online and available it's, for people to it's, watch? Yes, it's still on YouTube. So if you go, it has its own channel. Hunters has its own channel. Yeah. So if you go to Hunters the series on YouTube, you'll find episode one. We got some cool guests for you today. So uh, stay tuned. Hey guys, it's your girl Samara, and today we will be doing a review on the web series called The Closet Bitch. Hi ladies, how y'all doing? Can I have a, um, a honey and coke? That's a cocktail. We still have to go back to the office and, and, and deal with the work. She'll have a Prosecco. Prosecco, yeah, it's fine, yeah. Let's do a ball. Gucci was here. We're celebrating. Hold me down, because I have to knock this bitch the fuck up. I'm really excited about, where's this girl? Becoming a new me. Order me a fashion over piece. What's going on with your eyes, buddy? I don't open this shit. Listen, honey. I, I need to borrow a, a, a shirt that is right in the top drawer. I just came to see Shauna Fred. Just let me see her and I'll be on my way. You don't know who the fuck that bitch is. That is a different individual. That is not your mama. Say hello to the motherfucking back. I don't see a motherfucking reason why we got to contribute for your ass if you want to lay around the motherfucking house all day and scroll on the phone. I promise. I got you. Oh, um, uh, um, let me, let me, let me, let me hit you right back. Dad. I fucked up. I admit it. I fucked the fuck up. And I'm gonna tell you how you fucking up. You go down to that goddamn deli and you get yourself a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich with extra butter. I see the shit. I see the grease in the goddamn bag. Okay. He's talking about this. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. And then you go to the fucking crown fried chicken Kennedy knock and buck fucking chicken shit spot. It's okay if I eat you know, cook, 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 like your body. I'm not auditioning some shit and then until that works out, work. Like, who doesn't do the basics of their job? <laughs> Person? Go out there, smoke some weed, see the boys and show them to your father nothing, all right? Yo, you got me on a movie ticket? Yeah, don't even worry about it. Fucking broke nigga shit. Shut your bull headed ass up. Juju B, somebody gonna scoop that shit up and breed it in two weeks, start selling them fucking babies for $85 on 125th Street. Are you serious? I, it's like I do nothing right! Not even like that, Norma. You know I fucking love her. But she don't fucking respect me. Like I fucking did something. 
<laughs> Granted, I get that I'm fucking her father. I get that. I'm gonna come in there and I'm gonna take all them fucking clothes out of bought your fucking ass and throw them motherfuckers in the incinerator and pop you in your fucking mouth. You understand what I'm saying, buddy? You finish school and you fucking get the fuck out of here. You understand me? This is my motherfucking family, bitch. To new beginnings and hard work. Cheers. Normally what we do is that we bring people with the team to, you know, talk about, you know, the do's and don'ts and what we expect and stuff like that, or cocktails and food, and that's what we do today, but we're not going to do that on the TV. You know, since it's just going to really be Kathy, myself, you, why bring everybody else in? You know what I mean? I can tell you myself. No, I'm not well yet. And I'm not yelling at you. Fuck I'm looking at my best cocktail. Oh, some of these fucking mine, nigga. That's how niggas become thieves. The fact that it was one woman doing this, I'm like, the amount of talent that she put into this, I was just, like, amazed that I wanted to watch the next episode because I was just like, even though the trailer gave me so much that I was just like, but wait, there's more? Like, I want to see more. So as I'm watching this, it's, like, one of the best things I've ever seen. Like, seeing the different characters, seeing how they intertwine with one another, I would give this a 5 out of 5 rating. Um, and for me, I don't just get 5 out of 5 for nothing. Even though I still don't believe that I understand the purpose of the title, I still love everything about this show. I hope this show gets picked up so that others can see this too. did you transition from dancing to now doing TV and film? That was tricky. Um, I After I finished dancing, which I always say finished dancing, I don't feel like a dancer's ever finished. finished yeah. right. Every time you try to get out, it's like, yeah, we just want more show, we can get out of here. <laughs> um, it was a little bit harder because I didn't know or didn't have the knowledge back then mm -hmm. that, you know, you need an agent. Right. You need a manager. You need to, you know, already start kind of hit the ground running with the acting side of it. And acting is completely different than, you know, TV and film's different than doing theater. Theater, you know, you go into these auditions, there's 500 girls, you know, maybe vying for just one position. And that's basically what I did, and I thought, you know, TV and film would be the same way. It's not. Um, I signed up with Central Casting, that was my first way in. And from there, I did, you know, background work just to try to get a feel for what it's like to be on a set, what it's like to have to be on a set for hours at a time. And I think there's a huge misconception where people think that, you know, a 30 minute show or an hour long show is shot just within a couple of days. It takes weeks. <laughs> it can take, you know, wow. 14 days, 10 days to shoot. So you're thinking, you know, half an hour, you're seeing something on television and you're thinking, oh, you know, they shot that in a couple of hours. No. It's, it's different camera angles, it's multiple takes, it's not just one take and everything's done. It takes a lot of time and a lot of energy, especially on the, the actor and the performer side. So that was, that was a big revelation, a big realization for me to realize like, okay, this isn't like theater where you have one shot to get it right. People are paying between 200, upwards of $1,000 to see the show right. per ticket. And you gotta go on stage and perform. Right. You're sick, you're, your cat's dying, whatever's going on, you gotta leave that stuff at the door and you got one shot to get it right. You still do background work now, right? I do not. You do not? I do not. I'm trying to get to a principal level and there comes a point where it's a little bit of a transition mm -hmm. from doing background work to standing in to actually doing principal work. And the goal for any actor is not to just, you know, be a face in the crowd. You want to be behind the camera. Everybody wants to be a star. I mean, it's for me, it's not about the glitz and the glamour. Mm -hmm. It's about being an artist and being able to share what I have with the rest of the world. And yeah, it's it's, it's a tricky thing because if you do background work, it's very much frowned upon if okay. you're trying to be a principal. It, if you're featured in any kind of way, you know, your agent can't send you out for an audition because the audience is like, oh, hey, I just saw you on Blue Bloods and you were doing background work and now today you're like a lawyer and you're featured and you're, you know, you have lines. It can be confusing for the audience, so they they really try, if you're a real serious actor, you know, you, you should not be doing background work. So, so it's, it's different levels, it just depends on where you're at. It depends career. where you're at. So you do a stand-in for Notori Norton in Power. How is that? It's fun. It's, it's I, a lot of fun. Power's my show. Like, <laughs> me and Power, go, like, I'm sitting there, like, going through the motions of the entire show. Yes. And I was, like, feeling like Courtney Kemp, she just had, like, it's like mm -hmm. Shonda and her, like, they just yes. got my heart. Like, summer, it's her, and yes. then during the fall and winter, it's... it's it's Shonda yes. with, well, it was with Scandal, but now it's I How know, Do I Get a Murder? Now. And I know. And, and uh, what is it? Heartbreaks. Grazing Anatomy. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's the longest running show. Yes. But um, yeah, same thing. Courtney 
brilliant mind. Mm -hmm. um, it's this is her baby. I mean, this you know this was her heart and soul that she poured into it. I'm blessed to have been with the show for six years, and standing in, you know, I'm not on camera per se. I'm behind the scenes, and you know, just helping the camera guys and everybody line up their shots the way they need them to go for the actors. So when they come in, everything's set, and we can just keep it moving. But it's invaluable being a stand-in. Like. The job is, it's not as glamorous as everybody, as everybody thinks. Mm -hmm. I try to make the best of it no matter where I'm at. You know, I try to bring love and light. And for me, I've learned so much. It's, you know, it's the lighting, it's the camera angles, the shots that you're trying to get. A lot of the stuff you just don't know. If your background, you're not close enough and you're really not involved with the crew enough to be able to understand, like, what it takes mm -hmm. to be a professional actor <laughs> on, on a set. And it's... It's, it's mind-boggling. It's opened my eyes to a lot of things. I've learned so much. I'm, you know, I'm so grateful to my crew. <laughs> Shout out to my power crew. <laughs> you guys are wonderful. <laughs> DPs, writers, everybody. I mean, camera operators, sound. You guys are fabulous. You also are a director as well? I do. I'm directing my own. Well, I have directed my own indie that we entered into Cannes last year with okay. um, my significant other. And then we have a couple of other science sci-fi projects that are coming up. And how time. was that experience versus, like you said, you were doing, doing dance, you were doing ice skating, dance, and then you were doing background, then you are doing acting, and it's now I was directing. How was that? different being the one that has to call the shots and making sure you get all the camera angles you need because once you're done shooting for the day, the lighting might change and it might be different on any given Sunday. And it's like, okay, if you didn't get the shot you needed, and then you're realizing it later on as you're putting everything together and right. editing it, it's like, oh, shoot, I should have done one more take at this angle. I should have done another one that's a little bit tight to get my face. All that stuff, it plays into it. So, like I said, being on power, it has helped a lot because I've learned from the DPs just what it is that you need. I've learned from directors that move really quickly. They know exactly the shots that they want. They line it all up. Storyboarding is very, very important. Storyboard anything, especially if you're bringing other people into your project. You want everyone to be on the same page so you're not wasting time. And you're not getting people you know, ticked off because it's like, oh, she doesn't know what she wants. She's just shooting everything. You don't need to shoot everything. You just you know, shoot the things that you need and everything else. You know, if you have extra time on the back end, then it's just embellishments. That just, it should enhance your story. Y'all know what time it is. The sun is shining. We are alive. And that means it is time for some morning good. Last night, I dreamed of my soulmate. Oh, and it felt so real. You should have seen the things that we did. In your head. Our rendezvous was so intense. I'm over here tripping over a man that I haven't even met yet. Girl, the man doesn't even exist. I can still feel him all over me. I can't help but wonder what he's doing right now. And Bubbly Brown Sugar came after my mom passed in 2016. Um, and if you ever lost a parent, life just doesn't seem as magical. It get kind of dimmed a little bit for me. So doing theater and just what I was doing wasn't as important anymore. And so I was like, God, I need my spark back. I need my juju. Like, yes. I, like I need you to bless me with like, you know, with my purpose. Like, what am I supposed to do? And then one day, while stuck in traffic, <laughs> this idea like downloaded into my spirit. Yes. And I just and I just been running ever since with this idea. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I read on your website in your synopsis somewhere where you speak about how the soul is more advanced than our physical selves and how our souls are on this journey oh and my. our bodies <laughs> are just go like getting there. Like I love that. Oh I my god! So, and I'm not wording it the way that you did on the website. But I thought, wow, that is such a um, awesome idea for a love story and an interesting um, synopsis of a show. Where did that come from? I just, if you could talk about that a little bit and why you incorporated it into your series. That's so deep. You I know, know, I know. Deep questions. I'm sorry. Okay, that is a deep no, question. No, no, it's good. It's, it's good. Yeah. I really. That's like that's my own personal spiritual belief. Is yeah. that our our physical bodies are carrying the part that's the most divine, mm -hmm. that's the most connected to you, whatever is higher than us. And with that, if that's the truth, which is my truth, our job is to help our souls actualize whatever its purpose is here. Yeah. Like we're not here to just do whatever we want. We're here for a purpose. And sometimes we have to really go in and understand what our soul wants to manifest here in this mm. life time. And that's why this series kind of talks about souls a little bit to yeah. try to get people more open to the idea of being led by something that's more divine and just 
more beautiful than we could ever imagine. Oh, yes. Your crowdfunding process, did you have a team with you? Was it a lot of like, oh. did you have to do a lot of it by yourself? Like what was just that like for anybody out there who might be going into crowdfunding? I definitely did have people that were helping me. Um, with this kind of project, you can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. So I did have a production manager that I hired. Her name is Shelly LeBlanc and she's amazing. If you ever need a PM, totally hire her. Yes. I had a producer on the team as well and a bunch of interns mm. um, but my strategy was definitely threefold I don't think that you can just rely on your friends and family when it comes to raising money right you definitely have to have a network of people that are professionals that will want to see the value mm -hmm. in sponsoring so uh, my approach was of course I had the crowdfunding campaign but I really raised a lot of money before I launched my Kickstarter right through sponsorship so very smart yes I went to a bunch of businesses and I was like hey $500 or $400, you'll get X, Y, and Z. And they weren't cold contacts. They were people that I knew, that I worked with in the past, that knew, that liked me and was like, okay, sure, Tamla, I'll support in exchange for social media or advertisement or being at the red carpet screening in the future. Yeah. And then I did the crowdfunding campaign afterwards. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank I saw you. your progress. You had a lot of energy behind your campaign too, which I think is really important. Your social media posts were awesome. Oh, really thank you. And just your personality is beautiful. Oh. So. <laughs> I'm really... I'm really happy to see this show come to life. Thank you. Tell us about Jewel and why you chose her to propel this story. So Jewel, a little trivia, um, is named after my mom. Her name was Julia. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it'd be a cool way to tie her into this journey, even though she's part of it the entire time. But that's where the name came from. Mm -hmm. But as for her character, she is... A lot, in a lot of ways, the best parts of myself. Mm -hmm. She is a successful entrepreneur, yeah. you know, and she is confident and she has a love and she has all the things that a lot of people dream for, mm -hmm. but she wants even more. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that kind of how it is? Though? Right? We always want a little bit more. Right? <laughs> and so that's where her struggle comes in, where she's kind of like having these dreams from spirit that are just leading her to even more mm. abundance and more love. And that's what we're here. I think we're here to experience greater and greater versions of love and happiness and joy. Mm -hmm. So you gotta come to our red carpet screening. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we're looking at various ways to distribute right now. We're talking to a few digital and networks mm -hmm. about the project. So fingers crossed, I'll have more something, something more concrete in a few months. Tell me again slowly, I left the perfect man because God told me to. No, no. Oh, oh my no. God. No, 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 this no, time no. to go. We gotta go. I love being on a set where everyone is down to earth and everyone actually mm. appreciates and respects each yeah. other. And that's mm -hmm. what happened in Bubbly Brown Sugar. Correct? Yeah, the energy was dope. Yes. <laughs> Bubbly Brown Sugar team was awesome. The set was crazy. Everyone really like appreciated mm -hmm. and loved each other and, and I truly do enjoy it. I, I love the atmosphere. The atmosphere is dope. Yeah. Oh, both on and off set. Atmosphere is amazing. Yeah. And how was it working with Tamala on set? Oh, she's dope. Oh, so yeah. she's yeah. Now she's I'm bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> when I got my hands on that script, I was like, girl. Mm-hmm. Yes. The script, though. <laughs> That's the wild. writing is bananas. Yeah. Yes. She's an amazing writer. And, and it, it showcases different uh, levels of humans, of people that, that you don't get to see, like what we're talking about, mm -hmm. in an everyday independent film or even mm -hmm. in Hollywood. You know, people... people uh, of, of have to have soulness and, and they want to basically express what they feel yeah. and, and you don't see a thug in the corner selling drugs you don't see none of that you see actually a man wanting to be a man mm. and, and being a man and walking in, on those shoes and being responsible and, and, and wanting to love yeah. and wanting That's to beautiful. care for someone yeah and know? she she targeted so, she so many yeah that. she showcased so yeah. much in this film where a lot of people will be able to relate yes. from like she said relationship domestic violence and, and yeah, you know forgiveness good. and mm. love and mm -hmm. finding love and dream manifestation yes. dreams yes oh that sounds oh. so fun yeah. i know just from reading the synopsis i was like this is a really interesting concept. This was a fun one. Set. It was really, really fun. fun. Yeah. It, it was very long. Yeah, I know. Of it is course. like that. It, yeah. It was long, but, but it, was it was good. good. <laughs> it was good long. You know, like, My character went through it. Oh. So, yeah, my, my days my, weren't bubbly. 
but but I had to go through so, to some deep dark places mm -hmm. um, because my character Angela she's going through a lot. Gay, what are you doing here? I don't want to be here for you. But as far as like when you're actually on set and you have to deliver a performance that is dramatic. Mm -hmm. And you have the crew around. Yeah. You have. How do you get into your zone mm -hmm. to kind of to deliver um, that performance? For my character Angela, I did emotional recall for that mm -hmm. because every character is different, mm -hmm. so you have to use different techniques. But for me, I did emotional recall because a lot of the things that Angela went through, I went through. Mm -hmm. So I was able to revisit those places and really bring up those deep, dark-rooted issues that I have went through, that she's gone through. So I was able to connect that and bridge the gap between Angela and I. And, and I think they were very mm -hmm. respectful on set when, when, when you're tapping into emotions of that nature. I know that my character goes through a domestic violence problem. and, and I, Listen, I had a real bruise on my arm. I don't, <laughs> those are Wait, that was <laughs> real? I had one here that was real, and it was because we were in character, and you know, when you're in that, in that <laughs> movie, they grab you, know, he was yeah. dying like this. Oh, that guy, happened on set? Yeah, and then they created one on the back. But anyways. Um, <laughs> this is what happened. This, this is so much, we're having so much fun. That's yeah, no. <laughs> But yeah, I, so like I know that I remember. No, that because you said that you know she's a method actor. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I was like, yeah, I was like showing like, look at this, look at this. Like, it's real. Anyways, um, when I went into the bathroom for Kimmy, you know, it was a close set. I remember Ty being in there, the audio guy being in there, mm. and them really respecting my my space and really re respecting my 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 movement going into that emotion. Mm. And so it was. I mean, I, I had a breakdown in the bathroom, and, and he actually hugged me and said, you know, you okay, I'm here for you. So mm -hmm. to have that support when you're going through something like that. Mm, it's, absolutely. It's, I appreciate it. Well, I'm excited to see how all of this chemistry, you ladies have great yeah. chemistry. I'm excited Thank to see you. how it shows on screen. I'm and excited. we're excited I'm for excited. Bubbly Brown Sugar. Social media yeah. handles. Jenny Love, Jenny Lover at uh, Instagram or Twitter, uh, Facebook. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And I'm Jacinth, I am J A C I N T H on Instagram, Jacinth S U on um, on Facebook or at the Love After on all social media pa platform at the Love After. Perfect. Thanks for watching. That's it for today's show. If you want to get involved, follow us on Instagram and Facebook mm -hmm. at the Indie NYC Show. We post lots of cool stuff. If you're an actor, you can see casting notices on there. We highlight filmmakers. Motivation Mondays. Sometimes we even go live in the studio. You can call in and ask your favorite guest questions. So if you'd like to find out more about how to be a guest on our show even, send us an email at theindienycshow at gmail.com. Follow us on YouTube and leave your comments on what you thought about the show. Thanks for hanging out with us and make sure you tune in next time.